There has been a lot of talk about cryptocurrency and it being a huge disruptive force in the finance sector and being decentralized cuts out a lot of red tape when it comes to rules and regulations. Now you may be wondering what governments could do about it. Well that's when national cryptocurrencies come in. A series of governments are worried about the idea of Bitcoin and the multiple other cryptocurrencies gaining traction because customers would be able to make sustainable ongoing transactions and payments without having to ever introduce the use of a typical financial model or banking system. So, in order to combat this potential threat, several countries including major central banks like the Bank of England and the Bank of Israel will be launching their own version of a cryptocurrency. National cryptocurrencies are governments seeking to establish their own digital currencies, despite questions regarding the potential volatility associated with it, which is why it is safe to say that it will most probably be backed by a reserve such as gold or the US dollar in order to reduce volatility. Currently, the countries that have already created digital currencies include China, Ecuador, Senegal, Singapore, Estonia, Japan, Palestine, Russia, and Sweden potentially following suit. Even a small country like the Marshall Islands has announced its intent to create its own digital currency in order to boost its economy and will be on par with the US dollar. This is showing that cryptocurrencies could be a legitimate alternative to the established norm and is an option that governments are more closely considering. In fact, some have speculated that further adoption of the country-specific cryptocurrencies could have serious implications for the established international monetary system. For example, cryptocurrencies have been leveraged by some countries in order to evade sanctions imposed on them by some in the global community, as such transactions may transpire without oversight or tracking. Venezuela has been a leader in creating a government-supported cryptocurrency to accomplish this objective. In December 2017, Venezuela created the Pietro, a cryptocurrency intended to supplement Venezuela's Bolivia currency and help overcome US sanctions. As more states explore the possibilities of adopting cryptocurrencies, there is much speculation as to how it will affect the international monetary system currently in place. The current system relies on a slew of international agreed upon rules, norms and institutions that let countries trade and invest in each other. Cryptocurrencies, on the other hand, rely on decentralized control, typically using blockchains that serve as a public financial transaction database. The immediate concern is that if enough countries set up their own digital currencies, they could operate outside the existing framework of global central banks. Some, including the head of the International Monetary Fund, believe cryptocurrencies will indeed replace banks and existing financial systems by eliminating the necessity for intermediaries and third-party service providers in the future. With that being said, cryptocurrency is susceptible to volatility and risk, and the scalability of mining cryptocurrency doesn't seem feasible, at least at the moment. However, these challenges can and likely will be addressed over time. One of the biggest attractions with cryptocurrency over other types of currency that are currently available is that it can be sustained anonymously and have zero ties to a financial institution or country. Bitcoin allows customers to transfer large amounts of money between each other without the authorities being able to track the money. This makes it extremely difficult to tax and extremely easy to launder money, which is of huge concern. This benefits the average person as these cryptocurrencies will not come with the same price fluctuations that have been seen by Bitcoin. This is because the value of the cryptocurrency is directly tied to the financial transactions that are completed by a bank. Any of the systems for electronic payments and transfers will involve a series of banks across the country. And this means that all of the data associated with the national cryptocurrency will be tracked, taxed and non-anonymous. Which is a whole other debate about why crypto was invented. Current cryptocurrencies are completely able to bypass all of this. This can come as a huge advantage for anyone that is trying to trade cryptocurrencies or goods and services without any types of taxes. Now, if you're holding crypto already, you may be wondering what will happen to them. There is a great speculation on what will happen as soon as national cryptocurrencies start rolling out. Backed by the success of Bitcoin, it's likely that many of these national cryptocurrencies will have an automatic public trust as soon as they launch. Crypto will basically go mainstream. Their credibility and so their demand as a store of value or just the perception will likely see a demand boost even more. As more national cryptocurrency options come forward, however, this could represent a chance to invest in many markets, each with the country of creators setting the total size of the cryptocurrency pool available. At present, a national cryptocurrency does not offer a direct threat to Bitcoin, and Bitcoin does not offer a direct threat to the national banking system. As soon as changes become implemented and the market gets flooded with the national cryptocurrencies, existing coins could start to see the strength of Bitcoin fall 
or could raise the value of existing popular cryptocurrencies, and especially those such as Ripple whose underlying blockchain technology is already in line with banks. What are your thoughts about national cryptocurrencies? Will they be good for existing cryptos or not so much? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button.